By the end of this video, you'll know how to make first person movement in Unity using the brand new input system. First of all, in your scene, at the top of the hierarchy, you will see you have a main camera. What you want to do is drag that into your player model. Now, everyone's player models will be different. This is mine right here, but what you want to do is just make sure your camera is within the player's head. So when you click game, you kind of have this perspective of your player, as if you were looking through their eyes. Once you've done that, you want to click on this main camera, and you want to add a component. We're going to add player look. So this will be a new script, which will be called player look. So let's create and add that. You already have a system for looking around for your character. Please skip to the timestamp on the screen now. Thank you very much. Once it has compiled, you want to double click it and open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, once you open the script up, you're going to see a void start and a void update. We're going to keep those for now because we will need them a bit later. But let's leave a few lines at the top. So at the top, we want to make a float, which is a decimal value. And we're going to call this variable a min view distance. And I'm going to set it to 25 for my player. Now, this will vary for each player. But what this min view distance actually is, is it's the minimum amount that you can look down. So if you don't have this variable, you'll be able to look down all the way inside of you. If that makes sense, your head will be 180 degrees facing the floor, which just isn't really how it works. So I kind of like to have 25, sort of. It depends on the player model. It limits the range of view of the player. Now what I'm going to do is at the front of this variable, I'm going to add some square brackets and I'm going to type serialize field. Now what this means is we'll be able to edit the value of this variable inside of the Unity editor. Now I'm going to make another float and call it mouse sensitivity. And I'm going to set this to 100 by default and we can kind of play around a bit as we test to make sure what works. Now at the front of this I'm going to put public before the float. Now I could put serialized field to allow us to edit the variable within the editor, but by adding public, we'll be able to edit it from other scripts as well, which is good if you have settings to edit the mouse sensitivity. Now we're going to make another variable, and it's going to be of type transform, and we're going to call it player body. Now the reason we need the player body is to ensure that when we look with the camera, the body will be locked with the camera and rotate with it. Otherwise, the body will stay static facing one direction while your camera is rotating in another. Now, let's actually add serialized field. The reason we need the serialized field is because we need to change the player body. So if we ever change the model of player, we need to be able to change it within the editor. Now we're going to make one final variable, and this one's just going to be a float, which is a decimal once again. And we're just going to call it X rotation. And by default, I'll set it to zero just so we're not rotated when we first start the game. The X rotation is what will make sure that the player does rotate with the camera. Now before we can do anything else, we need to open up Unity to hit Edit, Project Settings, and go under Player. Now under Other Settings, you want to scroll down and you will see Active Input Handling under Configuration. We want to make sure we have this on both because uh, once you click it you'll see input manager old and input system package new we're going to be using this new system package here for our player movement but to look around we're going to have to use the old input manager as the new one still has a few problems so click both for now we're going to close that up now we're going to open back up our script now in the start method we're going to need to lock the cursor so to do this let's simply type cursor dot lock state equals cursor lock mode dot locked now this will lock our cursor on the screen so that as we move around our cursor isn't going to move around everywhere as well now under void update as it says here this method is going to be called every single frame this is where we're going to want to look around so we're going to need a float variable called mouse x and another one called mouse y, but we'll do mouse x first. Now this is going to be the x axis of the mouse. So we're going to want to get the coordinate, the x coordinate of the mouse position on the screen. To do this, we'll simply put input dot get axis, open the open up bracket, and in here we want mouse x because of course we're looking for our x axis here. 
and we're going to multiply this by the mouse sensitivity to allow us to move how we want based on our sensitivity and we want to time this by time dot delta time now this will make this frame rate independent now once we've made this mouse x we're going to copy it and we're going to duplicate it or paste it and this will become mouse y and you guessed it we've got to change this to mouse y but everything else can stay the same okay now we're going to use our x rotation variable we need to say x rotation minus equals mouse y and then under this we also need to say x rotation equals math f dot clamp x rotation comma minus 90 f comma min view distance now this looks quite confusing but what we're essentially saying is we want to clamp the value of the x rotation so that it cannot be lower than minus 90 and higher than the minimum view distance so it is stuck between those two values it can never go out of that range for the final bit of this we want to say transform dot local rotation equals quaternion dot euler now because transform dot local rotation is a quaternion it means we have to use quaternion dot euler to be able to rotate the object so we want to rotate it by the x rotation and then we don't want to rotate it on the Y or the Z. Because of course we only want to rotate left and right when we look around. Okay, so last line of code we're going to need here is the player body dot rotate. This will rotate the player. And then in brackets here we want vector three dot up times by mouse X. And that will create the rotation so that the player rotates with the camera. Let's head back into Unity. We can open up our main camera and you'll see where we've got our script, we've got min view distance now, the player body and the mouse sensitivity. For the player body, we can grab our player, drag it in and hit play. And now as you can see, we can click the screen and once we and we can start looking around we can't move yet but we can look around and that's what really matters we now need to go over to the actual player make sure you've got a rigid body on the player and on the actual body of the player make sure you have got a capsule collider what you want to do is make sure that this capsule collider is the size so it covers the majority of the player here so anyway, on the actual player, I'm going to add a component and we're gonna call this player move. Now before we can actually continue with this script, we need we actually need to go to window, package manager, where it says packages my assets, click that and click Unity Registry. This will allow us to search packages within Unity. Top right you'll be able to search, just search input and you'll see input system will pop up. Make sure at bottom right you click install and add it to your project. Once that is added, what you want to do is go to your player, add component, and then you want to add and you want to add player inputs. So what we want to do then is click open input settings on our player input, and we want to click create settings asset. Now we'll get access to all of this stuff here, where you will be able to change settings such as the dead zone the default press point there's loads of settings you can play around with here but we're not going to worry about those today you will see now that we've created that input system we have this like blue object here if we open the input settings window that is what this is here okay now back under the player input on the player you'll see a little comment here there are no input actions blah 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 click create actions and i'm just gonna call this tutorial now call these whatever you want, ideally the name of your game because you're never really going to have more than one. And you'll get this screen pop up. If you don't, you want to double click this kind of map looking shape down here. Now what we can do here, you'll see move, look, fire. Now as you can see we've got look which is what we could have done earlier. However this is a little bit glitchy I tend to find. So that's why we use the old input system for looking around. But I tend to find this a bit glitchy. But we can delete that. And we can delete fire as well because I'm not going to be firing. 
Now under move, you'll see we've got WASD, left stick, all of this cool stuff here. We can leave this now. Now that we've got it made, we can leave it. Just click save. Now in our script, we're going to type using unity engine dot input system. Now this is called using a namespace. This will allow us to use the new input system from unity. At the top, we're going to create a serialized field. And it's going to be a float and this will be our walk speed. Now, I'm going to initialize this as 10 for now. Now, this F simply means float. It, we're converting an integer to a float. That's what this F here means. Okay, so that's all we need for now. Now, we're also going to need a vector 2. Now, this is a two-dimensional coordinate variable. And we're going to call this move input. Now, that is because the new input system is vector 2. It uses vector 2. We're going to want a rigid body, and we'll just call this my rigid body for now. This will be the rigid body on the player. Now under start, we're going to say my rigid body equals get component rigid body. Now what that will do is it will set this rigid body variable to anything that has this rigid body within it under the player, which will be the player, because that's what the script is attached to. Now under update, what we're going to do is we're going to type run like this and you'll see we get an error now what we want to do is underneath the void update we're going to create void run and this will basically what will be allow us to move now what we want to do in here is simply create velocity for our player so the player can move so we want to say vector free player velocity this would be creating a new temporary variable we're going to set this to a new vector free move input dot x to get our x input. And then we're going to times that by our walk speed. At a comma, my rigid body dot velocity dot y. Because we don't want to add anything to the y, we want to keep it the same. And then move input dot y times my walk speed. Now, let me just explain this a bit further. The move input dot x times by walk speed, this is going to be our speed walking along the x. This will be the speed walking along the z here. Now we've used input dot y, that's because it's two dimensional. We can't do input dot z, because this is a z coordinate, but move input dot z doesn't exist. Yeah, because move input dot z doesn't exist, so we're going to set the y input. And put it on the z coordinate which means for the y there's not going to be anything we don't want to move on the y unless of course you have jumping but that is different we're not going to go over that in this video if you want that if you want to know how to jump please let me know in the comments and i'll happily make a video on it what we want here is just to simply set velocity dot y the y movement is going to be set to how it was before the default which in our case and then finally we need my rigid body dot velocity equals transform dot transform direction player velocity and in basic terms this is what will make our player finally move it will give our player velocity and move it now this isn't going to work yet there's one thing we are missing void on move not on animator move but on move and in here we need to put a parameter input value and we'll call this value for now now this function here, this method here, will be called every single time we move. So if we open this up again, you've got move here. Because this is called move, we want to call this function, this method, on move. So whenever we move, this method will be called automatically. And all we need to say here is move input equals value dot get vector2. And then some brackets. And that's it. Now if we head over to Unity, we should be able to move, and we can. Perfect. We can't jump, of course, that will be a separate video if you don't want that. You can see we fall off here, and we can move around. So that is it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to explain anything in a bit more depth, please let me know in the comments. If you need any help with anything, just leave a comment as well. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, try to reply to all the comments I possibly can. So if you leave a comment, I will try my best to reply to it so thanks for watching this video everyone if you did find it helpful please 
consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing as it's free to do and it really helps out the channel and i hope you enjoyed this video everyone so goodbye i'll see you in the next one